Let's try not to cough or sneeze. Hello, Internet. This is Olin from what I'm listening to. Uh, I want to apologize ahead of time because I sound a little husky. I am just getting over a cold that I had, which made me a little late on posting the vlog, but I'm still here making them, and that's all that matters. I'm here today, and I'm gonna be trying something just a little different. Normally with my vlogs, I have some sort of theme with the albums that I show, whether that be the genre of every album is the same, or every album has some sort of meaning to me, etc, etc. And I've had this stack of albums that have been on the chopping block, ready to be shown in vlogs, and I would just stare at them trying to figure out what I could put into a group that would have a common theme. And after staring at them for quite some time, I decided, fuck it. I got a big bag, I threw it in the bag, and now I have them all in here. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to reach into this bag and pull them out at random. I'll probably pull about seven for this one video and talk about them right then and there. This might end up being multiple videos. We'll just see. I have a general idea of what's in here, but they're all mixed up and I will just kind of go from there. So first of seven, here we go. Let's see, uh, the lucky number. Okay, <laughs> first album I have here, Animal Collective, Meriwether Post Pavilion. This is just one of those albums that I think every record collector or CD collector needs to have, partially because of the cover and partially because it's a great record. The first time I heard Animal Collective was their album Feels. It was this really bizarre, psychedelic pop that had some sort of Beach Boys harmonies, but was just sort of demented and weird. It was unlike anything I had heard. Not to mention the cover is really fucked up. It's like they took excerpts from a children's book and made it as though the children are mutilated, but there's purple goo coming out of them instead of blood. It, it's just bizarre. So after that being my formal introduction to Animal Collective, I have always been curious as to what other stuff sound like, and a lot of their fan base points to this being their other great one. I first heard it during the summertime, and I would listen to it with all my windows rolled down, just kind of jam into it. It's, I think, a lot more accessible than Feels. It's a great record. Uh, it's still very weird, but again, a little more poppy, a little more easy to listen to. So for those of you who have not heard of Animal Collective, this is probably the best one to start with. It's Definitely not nearly as weird, and then afterwards go listen to their other stuff because they are super wacky and yet super cool. Okay, next in the bag here. Uh, okay, this one right here. All right, this is a band called Symbols Eats Guitar. I got in a bit of a Symbols Eats Guitar phase after re-listening to their album, Lose. That is my first and most definitely my favorite Symbols album. It's fantastic. It was one of those bands that I actually went out to listen to solely because their name. My former coworker, Peter, was telling me about them, and as soon as he said the name of the band, I was like, okay, you have my attention, I'll go check them out. At the time, Lose was the latest album they had put out, and it was this interesting mixture of some shoegaze, but there were some slow jams, there's some stuff that was kind of funky, but then there was also stuff that was just straight up alternative rock. So for years, I'd been listening to that album on and off, and every time I heard it, I would love it more and more and more. So finally, up until recently, I heard it and I thought, I need to hear the rest of this band's discography. So I went on a little binge and I ended up buying their first, second, and their latest album, I believe it was their fourth record, all in one go. And shamefully, I actually haven't really listened to this one yet. What I do know is it's their first album, it's a lot more raw, it's more punky sounding, but it still has the developing sounds that later come across on Lose, which is much more refined. Considering how much I love this group, I'm sure this will be a fantastic record. Uh, I'm looking forward to listening to it. I should probably listen to it because I just spent the money for it, but this is their album, Why There Are Mountains. <laughs> Next up in the bag. 
Ah, uh, here we go. Duster, Stratosphere. This is- oh fuck. Oh shit, how about that? This is an album that I had been looking for ever since I was introduced to it. I would see it a lot on music spreadsheets, especially spreadsheets that were themed around space rock and lo-fi music. A lot of music fans really, really love this album. I even asked Steve the roommate about it and he was like, oh yeah, that's a great band. So for the longest time, I actually couldn't really find it. Even on Discogs, there were no entries of people selling it at all. But one random day, while at Amoeba, I stumbled across a copy of the album for a mere $4.99. I wasn't planning on buying anything that day, but when I saw it, I got it. This is, I think this is their first album. I know that they have two main albums and a bunch of EPs, so I want to say this is the first album here. Again, it's space music, but not as psychedelic, say, as Hawkwind or noisy as Flying Saucer Attack. It's like kind of lo-fi, laid back, but there's some space themes. It's just a really unique and cool record. It's a shame these guys are no longer around because I think their music is fantastic. And I think if they were still going, maybe this would be more easily accessible. I don't know. All I know is now I have to go find the other main album they have because it's great. Stratosphere, fantastic record, fantastic bands. Next in the bag. Oh, don't fall, please. Oh man, here we go. All right, this is Red's Innocence and Instinct. This is such a guilty pleasure of mine. I fucking love this album so very much. Even though I'm 24, I still love it. I would listen to this when I was in high school. I wanna say it was sophomore, junior year. I was in this little mopey phase over someone who didn't like me even though I liked them and I didn't know how to cope with those feelings. And that was back in the day when I was listening to a lot of radio rock bands. Breaking Benjamin was one, Hurt was another one. God, who else did I listen to? Just music that I thought was so deep and angsty and I listen to it today and think, oh my god, did I really like this stuff? But there's a couple of bands that still hold a place in my heart, and I know that they're not great, but I can't help but to love them. This is definitely one of them. For years and years and years, I owned this digitally, and after rediscovering it, I thought I actually need to own this on CD because it has been in my life for so very, very long and I think it's appropriate to have it on the wall here. Every song, to me, is fantastic. The intro song, Fight Inside, Start Again, oh, Shadows, oh, that was another one of my favorites. This particular one is the deluxe edition, so it has a DVD, which I have still yet to watch, as well as a handful of bonus tracks on here. Songs like Forever, Nothing and Everything, even the intro track I actually don't think was on the standard edition. If I got that standard edition, it just wouldn't be the same because I grew up listening to this deluxe edition. So thank you, Red, for this magnificent record and getting me through my angsty little phase because it definitely served me well. Does I hate inside of me like some kind of master? I try to save you, but I can't find the answer. I'm holding on to you. I'll never let go. I need you with me as I enter the shadows. Oh, oh. Okay, next up in this bag here. All right, this is Beck, One Foot in the Grave. This is old, old Beck. And it's kind of funny how he released it. So Mellow Gold was his first album that he released on a major label and got him insanely popular and successful. But he had a couple other albums released before Mellow Gold that not a lot of people realize. This one I actually think was recorded before Mellow Gold came out, but it was released after. It's the last album that he released on an indie label. This is actually a K Records release, which I've talked about a lot on the vlogs. It's also the reason why I got it. I've been loving everything K's put out 
especially since Calvin Johnson produced this and is even does some vocal work on here. Beck traveled to Olympia, which is where Calvin Johnson lived, to record this and got a couple dudes to be his band, and it's just, it's very much him. It's anti-folky, it's raw, it's weird, but it's still really good. This edition has so many fucking songs on here. The standard edition alone has a good amount of songs, but let's see if I can get this on the screen here. See, there's all, all of that on one disc. So as you can imagine, the songs are probably gonna range from like 30 seconds to at the very most two minutes, but it's a lot of content on here. And to have Beck and Calvin Johnson on one CD, I had to check it out. So this is a cool record and I love his old stuff. Next up in the bag, uh, let's do this one. <laughs> All right, this is the Get Up Kids. These guys were huge in the emo world, uh, particularly the 90s emo world. These guys are one of the reasons why emo music is incorporated with a lot of pop punk sounding stuff. They're one of the main players behind bands like Jimmy Eat World, Old Fall Out Boy. They were probably inspired by Captain Jazz and a lot of the 80s emo punk guys, but they're one of the more refined sounds. I actually discovered this band in kind of a weird way. When I was a sophomore in high school, I was taking a Spanish class, and we used to have to watch these videos called Quack. Quack! And the opening theme they used for Quack was the song 10 Minutes. 10 Minutes to Downtown! I didn't really think anything of the band. I thought it was just a wacky band doing the theme for a wacky show. And years later, I learned who the Get Up Kids were and their legacy, and I realized that Quack was probably just some college show that these kids made, and they were probably fans of the band, so they used the theme song. And after rediscovering the song and really liking it, I thought I should probably get this album just to hear what the rest of the stuff sounds like, and just so I can get to know the band and know their legacy. Thankfully, it was so cheap, so here it is. It's a cool record. I haven't listened to all of it just yet, but I've listened to some of the beginning songs, and I really like what I hear, so anytime I'm in a pop-punky mood, this is the best record to put on. Bad things are so don't be gone when I get home, you're all I have. Okay, the last one I'm gonna do for this video. Let's see, is it gonna be a good one? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we have more Beck. This is another old Beck album. This one is actually released before Mellow Gold. Beck has been known for changing his styles of music in every album. He's done funk stuff, he's done really sad folk stuff. Uh, he's done dance stuff. This one is weird and insanely noisy. There are definitely some folk elements to it, much like the last album I showed and Mellow Gold, but on here, he really experimented with the sound and would just do all these weird noisy tracks. But knowing me and loving experimental music and loving noise music, I had to check this one out. After hearing some of Beck's old work, I now have to go get the other ones because I really dig it, but until then, I'll be enjoying the hell a uh, stereopathic soul manure. Really weird, but really cool. Okay, internet, that does it for me. I really have to go to the bathroom. 
Um, but if you have any albums you want me to check out, leave a comment down below. If I like it, I'll maybe feature it in a vlog. But until then, this is Olin from What I'm Listening To, signing out. Goodbye. <laughs>